Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode 4 of Spy Family. So, last time we basically had just an episode of the family getting used to each other, spending the day out, preparing for the upcoming interview by taking in high culture-based uh, activities. Stuff like going to the opera, going to an art gallery, stuff like that that you would typically associate with high culture um mind you anyone can go to an opera anyone can go to a gallery it's just it's associated with that kind of idea um i have like a hair on my on my face <laughs> um and you know go get some food and stuff as well some nice food of course it has to be fancy <laughs> and we get to just see how this family is connecting and how they're uh, just starting to understand each other and figure each other out and everything. Uh, we see in it that Yor is kind of uncomfortably obsessed with weaponry <laughs> to the point where it seems to kind of turn her on. Um, and we get to see both Yor and Lloyd jump into action in order to stop a purse snatcher. It's it's a fun episode. It, it just it really just builds upon these characters well without too much of like stakes or anything to worry about. And sometimes that's very appreciated. So now we go into episode 4. I assume we're probably going to get to the interview in this episode just based on the fact alone that I mean, where else are we going to go <laughs> at this point? I think there's 12 episodes in this season, so it's like I feel like they kind of have to get to that. Um, I mean, I don't know for sure. Excuse me. We'll have to see. Um, that's the only thing I can think of that they would do, like, unless they just spent more time preparing. But it's like, why would you have two episodes of basically the same thing? It would feel... A little redundant and mind you i don't know how it went in the manga so i i can't say in that regard either uh but i'm excited i i found that i'm really loving this series like more so than i even thought i would after the first episode um i'm just like kind of getting obsessed with it and the proof is kind of in just how I've been recording these. Like, I've been recording these a shit ton of time ahead of time. Because this is, uh, this is being posted on Friday, June 10th. Right? Uh, so just as a note, I am recording this on Wednesday, May 11th. A month ahead of time. Because I'm just getting so obsessed with it, and... I've already been recording an, a bunch of other stuff uh, well ahead of time lately as well, so I'm just, I'm pre-recording a lot here. <laughs> and and I, I've become so obsessed with this, I just want to watch more of this series. I want to continue experiencing the joy and the fun and the the interesting spy stuff as well. It's, it's really fun. Um... I think by this point, most people would probably say Anya's their, their favorite part of this. But for me, it's actually your at this point. Um, I, I love Anya, don't get me wrong. And I love Lloyd too. But your is just like, she's hitting kind of that perfect spot for me. Of a character who's not just like, yes, sexy in her appearance. Um, and badass in terms of her job and the action stuff. 
but who is just so likable at the same time. This perfect balance of badass, sexy, and likability that just really just gets gets me. Like, that's the kind of shit I love. Um, and so seeing that display here is great. And I saw in someone else's reaction, I don't remember whose, because I've been watching a couple reaction series to this. Um, but they said, um, they, they were asking, I think it, no, was it, where else? it might have been rough. It might have been rough senpai's reactions, but I'm not sure. But either way, uh, the reactor asked, uh, would she count, would, would your count as a MILF? even though she's not technically really Anya's mother and all. And, like, just instantly my thought is like, yes. Whether she's not, like, biologically her mother, or even if it's just technically uh, because of, you know, um, a ruse that they're all putting on, like she would still technically be Anya's mother. Like, legally speaking, she is. Like, the, the paperwork has been filled out and everything. Legally speaking, they are a family. No matter what their intentions or, or whatnot are for the creation of this family. And because she is officially Anya's mother, she is a MILF. <laughs> She, she is a mother, so that's just undeniable. And yeah, she's really, really attractive too, so that definitely helps in the second part of that, uh, <laughs> that acronym. But either way, uh, I, I just, I, I love how this series is getting so massively popular lately. Um, it, it's just becoming this huge thing, and I'm really, really happy that a series can become this, this popular. And even when it's a series I don't like, um, like Demon Slayer, I, I, I get excited every time a series reaches that level of popularity because it means that one the creators and the people working on it are probably going to get paid more and are probably going to be able to make more allowing for them to in turn have more work and everything and have more and get more money from it but it also like it's just cool seeing people's work appreciated even if not everyone does and even if i don't i love seeing that their work is still going appreciated i still love to see people so passionate about anything, but especially content like this that I do have some investment in. <laughs> um, so it's just really cool from that perspective. I don't have to like the series to support people's passion for it. And I think that, I, I honestly wish that everybody were the same in, in that regard. Unfortunately, too many people are on the side of if they don't like the series, they just don't care to even hear people talk about it. And I'm like, just, are you that petty and dumb? That's stupid. And honestly, kind of rude. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm all for people being excited for a series, even if I'm not. And in this case, it's just cool seeing how popular this is getting. Because this is, like, really big right now. Like, it's everywhere. Everyone in, in the anime community is talking about this and just raving about it. It's... I, I don't know if I would say it's as big as Demon Slayer was when it, like, first came out and reached that popularity. Probably not. But it's really up there. And... This series, I definitely think, is going to be getting a second season. Um, either way, we're just going to get this started and hope for the best uh, with this episode. So, 
When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So this was a lot. <laughs> um, so we get to the school. We finally get to that, and we see the foragers heading in, and, and it seems like they're testing them right off the bat just from the way they're walking in and everything, checking their elegance, the way they carry themselves, all of that jazz. Um, the housemasters, as well as other members of the staff, are watching them to check on just everything going on. And we focus on one of the housemasters in particular. I, I'm not going to get their names down right quick, but <laughs> um, this dude with the absolutely elegant facial hair um, is obsessed with elegance. He views that as kind of the highest uh, proclamation of a candidate's worth to enter the school. He judges them based on their actions, the way they carry themselves, and just the way they're prepared, as well as the actual interview itself in regards to how elegant they are. And he sees the way they act as they come in, first the way they're walking, but then the fact that they pay respects to the statue of the original headmaster. And as they continue in, the way they handle the uh, test with this kid who's, uh, who's fallen into this water grate and everything. At first he's like, oh, they're not elegant because he just jumped into that dirty water. Uh, he's not going to dirty himself uh, before this interview. But then they reveal they brought a change of clothes in case something like that happened. He's like, why would you think something like this would happen? <laughs> and then they end up having a real accident where some animals get loose. I don't know why they have all those fucking animals. But they do, I guess. Do they have, like, a farm on, <laughs> on the campus? Do they, is there, like, classes for taking care of animals some, for some reason? I don't know. But... The animals have gotten loose, and so, uh, since this is not actually a test, he's, like, freaking out, and, like, this is bad. <laughs> but, Yor manages to handle this one. While Lloyd helped the kid out of the, uh, out of the grate, Yor uses pressure points to take care of a, uh, stampeding cow, which spooks the other animals and allows all of them to eventually go home after Anya also helps uh, soothe the cow herself because it was definitely scared and freaked out after getting paralyzed like that. Everything worked out though. They had another change of clothes after all the dust was kicked up and everything and they went on to the interview after actually getting to speak with the housemaster. Um... And the interview was definitely what we were waiting for with this. The interview itself was the main drive and focus of what they had been building up to and just in general of this episode. So we see that uh, three housemasters, I don't know if there's supposed to be more or if these are just the only three, but three housemasters are just kind of doing the interviewing process for all the candidates. As Lloyd and Yor come in, we can see that they uh, they are definitely more prepared and ready to handle this. And we, we get to learn a little bit about these different housemasters. Of course, there's the one we already met, but then there's this other guy who's this very straight-laced but nice guy, very popular, the most popular of the housemasters, apparently. Um pretty standard dude, I guess you could say. <laughs> Not the most elegant of terms, I know, but still. Uh, and then you have the guy uh, who is the only son of the, of the last headmaster. Not the original, the last headmaster. And 
he got the job as housemaster from nepotism and everything. And also, he's kind of a piece of shit. Um, like, he's constantly, he, he, well, not constantly, but he consistently barrages them during the interview with these horrible questions that he really shouldn't be asking. He's just, he's already basically decided he doesn't like them and is going to do everything in his power to fuck with them and get them out of there to, so they can slip up. And he's just, he's, he's actively sabotaging the interview with his out-of-line questioning. And we see that the others are asking perfectly fine questions, and our trio are doing a good job at answering them. It's only when he gets into play that things start to go out of hand. And then he gets, he, he asks a question that makes Anya cry, and you can feel the entire fandom of this series, like, getting as angry as Lloyd and Yor did. Um, like, I was, I, I was getting angry, and I, I was on the verge of tearing up myself, like, I, 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 you, you don't ask shit like that. So he asks the question about whether or not Anya prefers this mother or her previous mother, which again, it makes Anya cry because of, you know, her history, her past with everything. And in, like pretty much instantly, Yor goes into full attack mode. She gets just straight up violently angry. Like... Honestly, if Lloyd hadn't punched the table, she probably would have killed the dude. Like, just out of rage. Um, so it's probably a good thing <laughs> that Lloyd got involved, too. Um, we see that he's, like, trying to convince himself not to, almost. He, he's trying to convince himself to not let his emotions get the better of him and everything, but he can't do it. He, he gets up, too, and he destroys the table and he tells them flat out to their faces it's like if this is how you handle yourselves if you aren't gonna take a child's feelings seriously and treat them with respect then we don't want any part of this school and it was it was the moment where it it's made truly clear that what Lloyd did and said there was 100% because of him being Anya's father. It was not a it was not a decision that he made based on logic or the mission or anything. It wasn't even a decision made just on a like mo moral standing or anything. He did that. And he said that because he was protecting his daughter. It was purely fatherly protection. And it just goes to show you how much he's come to care for her. Whether he wants to admit it or not, whether he wants to think this is just part of the mission or or not he he very much cares for her and it's something he's not used to because he's disassociated himself from other people for so long and just completely worked in the shadows and pretended basically all of his emotions for a good portion of his life that it's not common for him to actually care this deeply about someone. So the fact that he does also really says something about how much, not that he's let his guard down, but about how much he and Anya have connected. They love each other. And with your joining the mix, she's been brought right into that love as well, and she's accepted it as well. You can see that with her anger 
when uh, that fuck waffle said what he said. And it's just, it's, I, I, I definitely think this is the episode that truly, more than anything, shows us that. Not just tells us, but shows us how strong of a family this truly has become. And even after the fact, when they go back to the their house and they're just, like, Lloyd is practically panicking because of fucking it up. Like, even afterwards, he's like, okay, just this once, just this once, we'll, we'll just be there for each other, basically. And, and like, they, they're just there for each other as a family. And, and back at the Academy, you see uh, Mr. Fabulous Elegant Facial Hair uh, choose out um, at first the uh, the bitch for what he said but then he like kind of holds back when when ass face is like you know who I am my father may not be headmaster anymore but he still has a lot of influence and that does hold um, Mr. Elegant Mustache back for a moment but then he starts remembering what was said and everything and uh, about uh, the faculty and everything being the pride of this school and he's just like fuck it punches the dude right in the face it's like the most elegant of face punches and it was so so absolutely satisfying cuz it's like there there was no satisfying end to the actual interview like lloyd he punched a table defending his daughter and everything and that's great but like you didn't actually see the asshole get anything for his actions. So when you see the other housemaster just deck him right in the face with full force, it's like it is the most satisfying punch you could believe at that moment. Um, it, it joins, it, it goes up there definitely with some of the most satisfying punches in anime, such as when uh, in One Piece Luffy punched uh, St. Charles at the human auction house in Shibanti. Or when, uh, in Hunter x Hunter, Leorio punches Jing for being an absentee father. Stuff like that. It, it definitely joins up there with one of the most satisfying punches in anime. It's just, it's so good. <laughs> and it, it's just, it's just so good to see that asshole get his comeuppance after being such a piece of fucking shit I, on one hand I can't wait to see how other reactors like react to that like I, I am hoping they get as angry as like as I did and as Lloyd did and as your did because that is like god that is fucked up I know Ruff probably will because Ruff is a father to, to, his, to a daughter as well so he'll probably get very angry at that he will probably understand exactly how fucked up that kind of thing is. Um, so I, I definitely think Ruff will get pretty angry at that. And that's a good thing. Uh, you should get angry at that. So, um, But yeah, I think it's pretty clear that the other two are going to vouch for the Foragers and they're going to get in. Um, so now the question is just going to be, like, how are they going to receive the news? Is it just going to be through a phone call, or is it going to be through a letter? I don't know. We'll have to see with the next episode, I guess. Um, but I'm very much excited. This series has, like I said in the pre-thoughts, surprised me by how much I've enjoyed it. Like, I really did not expect this, even after the first episode, which I loved. I really did not expect to absolutely fall in love with this series this heavily. Um, I, the interesting thing is, I would almost say that I like this as much, maybe even more, in terms of just general enjoyment, than Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, Jujutsu Kaisen, like, again, that also really impressed me from the start. 
and as I continued watching, I got more and more excited every time, and it just blew me away in so many regards. And it's, I mean, it still is, mind you. But with uh, with that series and this series, it's like they're two very different shows. Jujutsu Kaisen being an action shonen, and this Spy Family being a comedic. Uh, spy thriller <laughs> kind of blending uh like wholesome comedy with the spy thriller stuff it's a really interesting blend uh but the two shows are very different nonetheless and so i'm it's hard to compare the two but they are both shows that recently i got really into after doing a first impressions of and have just gotten more and more into but uh, yeah i think just in terms of general weekly excitement i'm really really high up there right now with spy family and with with jujutsu kaisen i'm still very much up there but it's kind of i wouldn't say plateaued it's more like it's just it, it's just the same level of hype every week that this one is just rising at the moment Spy Family's hype for me just keeps rising with every episode I watch, while Jujutsu Kaisen is just kind of staying the same level of hype, which is still a very high level all the time. Um, so it's, it's hard to say which one I like more overall right now, but in terms of just which one I'm more hyped about right now, I would say it's uh, Spy Family, surprisingly so. Um... But there's a lot of factors that go into it otherwise. So, you gotta give it that. But the fact that I'm loving this series this this much, that I'm this excited to get to it where I'm recording episodes a month ahead of time, it's like, that should be, that should be giving you plenty of information on how much this series is really winning me over. Um, like, really winning me over. <laughs> I just, I would not expect a series like this to really just be this damn good and this damn enthralling. It, it caught me off guard. And I think that, that helps lead to some of the hype as well because it was unexpected for me. Um, but either way, either way, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode, episode four of Spy Family? And... Just as a note, if you do know anything about where this goes, like if you've read the manga or whatnot, please, no spoilers. I do not want to be spoiled on this. I, I very much do not want to be spoiled on this. Um, with how much I am loving it, I want to continue to be surprised because that's just been kind of a big deal for how much I've been enjoying this. <laughs> so no spoilers if you know what's going to happen or where it's going to go or anything like that. Either way, uh, I think there's one episode still out as of when I'm recording this. Um, <laughs> that's how much I've caught up. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I don't know. Either way, I don't think I'm going to record necessarily another one like right away, but you never know. Hard to say. <laughs> um, either way, like I said, tell me your thoughts. And we'll get to more as we get to more. Um, either way, obviously, they'll still be recorded ahead of time. Uh, for the time being, though, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.